All right. Uh, hopefully you guys are able to hear me. Um, a little bit, a little bit late. Was not planning on streaming today, um, and the microphone might be a little cursed because I am on my laptop. I wasn't necessarily expecting to have to do this, but um, I am excited to be able to bring this game to you. Um, the mashup today, as I update the stream title, um, real quick, is going to be between the Mass Valor and Pirates and the Metabusters. Uh, both of these teams have kind of been struggling um, going into this season, uh, so we'll have to see how they do. I think either team really does have a shot to win today. Um, so I think it should be a pretty good matchup. Um, Metabusters is fighting for their first win here, but they have a roster that we actually haven't seen them run yet, and I think it's going to be really strong. Um, I believe that Hidiri, um, Silico, Garrett, um, who else? Well, I will get it pulled up shortly. Um, just getting some setup stuff done. Okay, and the roster, oh yeah, so Hideri, Noam, Silico, Garrett, and Honan is the roster here. I think it's really strong. Uh, we see Hideri return to top lane, Silico in the mid lane, um, Noam is jungling, and Garrett, Honan, bot lane, I'm really scared of. Uh, Garrett actually had a crazy showing um, in the Frostbite tournament. Uh, he was subbing for the other team, actually, so we might get to see him use some of that knowledge that he gained while playing for that team. Uh, to get, uh, oh, you're not Steve. Okay. Um, so he will get to use some of that knowledge that he gained from playing that team in this game, potentially, uh, to try and out with them in draft and during the game. I'll we'll have to see if that actually does come to fruition, but I believe he didn't drop a single death, um, in those two games. So, uh, playing super well in the A to carry position, and we'll see if he's able to, uh, keep that up. And then the Mass Valor Empires, I believe, are running Heroic, Jackson, uh, Valor, Will, and Aya, uh, which is the roster that they ran um, last week when they were able to clinch their first win this season. Um, so both teams looking pretty strong going into this matchup. Um, as I said before, I really do think it could go either way. So uh, stay tuned and make sure uh, to show your support for the team that you think uh, will end up winning or just the team that you want to win, uh, despite your confidence level in them. All right, and we should get to look at some highlights real quick. Um, So our key matchup today is actually going to be Valor versus Silico. Um, these players know each other quite well, and this matchup has been hyped up for the longest amount of time. I believe these players have played on the same team or have just not played in the same season uh, many times. Silico has not played too many games in mid lane, but has performed quite well when he does so. And his champion pool is spicy. We have Echo, Zillion, Zed, Zareth, and Lucian. Um, a very strange pool, uh, but very fun to watch. Um, and then we have Valor on the other side. 27 wins, 17 losses is ridiculous. Um, huge stat line there, 2.75 KDA, but a lot of these mid laners are more traditional, um, which makes sense considering Silico is on the meta busting team. Um, so expect to see him kind of do something a little off meta. Um, and Valor uh, will probably see something pretty standard, uh, but he could also mix it up just because he is playing against Silico. Um, these two players are very close friends that have been talking about competing against each other for a while, so our focus will definitely be uh, right here in the mid lane. Um, another uh, key player to look at is Hidiri. Um, not a lot of these champions are top laners, but I think Maokai, Kasante, and Tarek, you could all play top. Hecarim as well, uh, to a lesser extent. Um, he's played 73 games and 50 champions across those games. Huge champion pool. 50.7% win rate is definitely nothing to scoff at either. And that KD is 2.36. Uh, which is pretty solid, um, especially given that he's played a bunch of solo lanes. Player to look at for MVP is obviously heroic. This should not come as a surprise to anyone. His Darius has been dominating the league. Um, 13 games played, 9 champions. Um, while the ratio is pretty similar, it's not as impressive on a smaller sample size of games. 4.39 KDA, though, is disgusting. He's gapped top lane pretty much every single game this season. Um, so he should be able to just do it again. And that 61.5% win rate is nothing to scoff at either. Although, again, on a smaller sample size, so less statistically significant. Um, and then looking at these key champions, Darius, Sejuani, Silas, Twitch, and Seraphine are likely uh, good bans against MVP. For the other side, uh, Hidiri, 
is looking at that because Sante, and then Zach, Zed, Ezreal, and Zareth are also good bands. Zareth actually does hit um, both Silico and Honan, so probably a good band there. Um, we should be hopping into draft any second, so I'm just gonna kick it over to there. And this is not quite working. Um, apologies for that. I was trying to set up um, some sort of crazy web hosting stuff uh, <laughs> for streaming did not quite work out and I was trying to run it on this laptop so some of these scenes are going to be a little scuffed uh, so you're just gonna have to work with me a little bit here um, shouldn't be too bad for too long though and will definitely be fixed for the second game and the good news is draft hasn't actually started yet so we're not gonna miss much while we're working on this okay and it looks like draft is actually starting right now um, yeah okay so perfect timing um, I'm expecting to see... Thresh is actually a really good ban here. Um, it's really hard to ban out Metabusters, actually, because they'll probably play literally anything. Honan's Thresh is disgusting. He actually played it against our team last week um, and played super well. Jax getting banned out from Heroic. Um, Darius I'm personally more scared of, but they probably have an easier counter pick into it. Um, so Jax is also a pretty good ban. Um, I wonder if they'll just leave the mid lane completely free of bans to see what Silico and Valor can do against each other, though. Um, I think that matchup could be pretty fun. With no bans on the table. Okay, and Ezreal's taken away from Garrett. Um, one of the champions that did show up for him, I believe he has 16 games on the pick. Uh, only 50-50, so not like a crazy win rate, um, but he's very solid on the pick. Um, so Shawani's taken off the table. Um, I know Mason was actually hyping this up a lot. Uh, said that Jackson played really well on it. I believe he was the one who passed the game, so he'll have a lot of additional insight on that. Um, and he said that having that Sejuani prior really opened up the game for them. So taking that pick away from him is a pretty good ban here. And then Jarvin's picked up. Uh, Noah has played it before, and it did just get buffs on the patch. Uh, I believe it was an increased AD ratio on the shield, um, which is pretty helpful. And then Malachi's taken away, another one of Jackson's comfort champions. Could be flexed, and Hidiri and Noam, I believe, could also play it, but they're still scared of it as a first pick, despite some of the nerfs. I hate it here, man. Why does every team in this league decide it's a great idea to first pick Samira? I'll have to see how it goes, but I really don't think this champion is a choice. Unless it's some sort of weird mid lane pick. And I know Heroics actually played a lot of it bot lane, so we could see some flex coming out there too. And then Cho'Gath picked up. That's probably for Honan on support, honestly. Uh, he's been playing a lot of it, and he's been doing really well, so. Wouldn't be surprised if that's where it goes, but it's also a flex. Um, but flexing at top lane, uh, would violate the uh, Metabusters principles, so we're likely going to see it say support. Zaya, a pretty good pickup. Garrett performed really well in that champion during Frostbite. Or, yeah, during Frostbite. Uh, so seeing him play it again is good, and it's a good denial pick from Will. Uh, Valor and Pies just tried to play through uh, Will Zaya as well. Twitch is up on the table though, um, so it is interesting to see that Samir is locked in instead of Twitch. And the Nautilus gets uh, locked in here. Uh, Cho'Gath is pretty good into Samira, just able to hold W and just silence her ultimate immediately. Um, and he does do pretty well in the Nautilus as well, so I think I'm liking the Metawester's bot lane a lot more here. We'll have to see how MVP complements it with the rest of their team, because they're able to snowball through the Samira. Uh, this game could just be one for them. Okay, and Volibear's locked in. This is one of Jackson's like classic picks. We haven't seen in a while, uh, but I'm excited to see it. It has a lot of the same early gank power that the Maokai and Sejuani do. Uh, so it's good to see it come out um, of retirement. Yeah, that's, that's the one downside. I'm gonna try not to type at all this stream. <laughs> 
Oh, and the Camille is denied from Heroic here. They're just gonna blind pick Camille. I'm not sure how you feel about Camille as a blind pick, but it is a very good champion. Um, and it looks like they're holding their counter pick for either Silico uh, or Noam, both of which I think are good picks. Or, oh my God, wait, this could be Camille jungle for Noam. That's my guess, I'm predicting this. It's a huge denial. And it's honestly probably pretty good in Devala Bear. Uh, you're able to kind of disengage his early prio by just hopping over a wall that he can't follow. I love to see this from Metabusters. I hope that they perform really well on it. Timo's banned. Huge respect to Silico there. They're aware that this could be the Camille jungle flex and Silico could go top. Or they honestly don't care and they're just banning Timo mid to ban Timo mid. I think it's super valid. Um, Darius and Fiora are both taken away. Um, they might just be looking to counter pick top here and blind pick their mid. Graves, they're keeping the flex alive. Graves can go in any of the three remaining unlocked positions for them. Graves is a huge champion. Uh, really good top lane, mid lane, and jungle. We can see it go anywhere. Holly being the blind pick for Valor is pretty interesting here. Uh, I think it's a very solid champion, and it probably does pretty well into Graves, so they might have a read on what's going on here. Um, I think it's also probably solid into Cho'Gath top, um, and I don't think it'd be too terrible into Camille either, because you can just shroud uh, when you're inside the XX ultimatum. So I think it's just a very good cover pick to cover all the different flexes. And the blind top laner... Okay, this is a blind Akali top. Uh, with Azir mid. Um, Malzahar would be really fun to pick here into Azir. Um, very cringe though, and I don't think Silica's gonna go for it. Um, I wonder if they're gonna keep um, the Graves mid into the Azir. I really don't think so. I think their range advantage is pretty terrible there, but I think Graves into Akali top might be decent, so they could try that and go for a counter here. Um, they're just gonna lock Orn. Uh, Bedge pick. Yeah, that's actually like a very lame way to end off the draft, unless Orn is not going top lane. Uh, but I wouldn't be super surprised if it did. Um, I'm not sure entirely what these matchups are um, like, just because a lot of them are kind of weird. Um, Akali should absolutely dominate Orn, um, and Azir should also completely dominate Orn. Um, so I think it is looking just a little bit rough uh, for the side of Metabusters in their solo lanes, because I don't think Graves is going to have a great time at either of these picks. Um, so we'll have to see. Yeah, Akali should be Ornn. Um, I can't imagine Graves is very well into either of these champs. Uh, so I'm expecting to see Jackson just play heavily to get um, Will fed here and just let his solo lanes uh, do well on their own. Also, I do want to give a huge shout out to Noam. Uh, really made my job easy today. Uh, got all the stuff set up for casting for me, even though he's trying to captain and coach his team. So, really appreciate that from him. I'm going to mute real quick so I can create uh, some champion assets.
Okay, so the only uh, player pairing here that's actually played against each other uh, yet is going to be Will versus Garrett. Um, and it is slightly favoring Garrett, although Will's stats in the matchup are much better. Garrett has actually not played a Zaya game, um, officially speaking. Um, so we'll get to see how that goes. Uh, and the records for Will and Aya on these bot lane picks, uh, although a very small sample size, uh, positive trending, which is good. And uh, this is just the season. Oh, wait, never mind. It's just scrolling faster. I thought it was going to. Okay, and then Honan, 1 0 in the Choga. Uh, not surprising. Silico's Graves looking a bit rough, but I believe that was 80 carry, so. That will explain the bad score line. A Valor's Azir, not like um, the highest performing thing, which uh, I wouldn't expect actually. Um, Jackson's Vile Bear, a lot of picks, so not super surprising to see there. And then first time for everyone else, it looks like. Moving on, um, the season records of these picks are very different though. Um, Orn, uh, the most played in this lobby, doing quite well. Camille, um, good record. Uh, not as good of a KD. Graves looking kind of weak this season. Um, Zaya, high presence, not super good stats. Cho'Gath, absolutely rolling this season. I believe we did have Blake in Twitch chat earlier saying that Cho'Gath will probably not die at all this game, which I believe. Modelus also doing quite well, 6-2. and two. Um, Azir, 0-3 this season, kind of gross. Um, Balabar, 1-0. <laughs> the 5.33 KD. Shout out to whoever uh, played that. And then Akali, also really high picks, uh, which is... Not super usual for assassins, I don't think. Um, but it seems to be doing quite well. Uh, overall records, yeah, Kali is suffering a bit more here. Uh, Valabar has super high presence, uh, but nowhere near the Orn, um, who's actually relatively weak overall, I think. Um, it's just a weak side pick, so it doesn't necessarily perform uh, every game. Um, none of these are like super notable. Um, Samira has a negative. Azir is just like, uh, we do not know how to play Azir in this server, clearly, so. Is what it is. Um, these chat matchups, we've actually not seen any of these before. I'm just gonna double check and make sure that these are correct. Um, yeah, I was actually able to redraft correctly, uh, so good for me. Um, Zaya, a really good counterpick into the Samira. Uh, obviously, is able to just ult Samira's ulti, um, even though it's on a much longer cooldown. Uh, Samira is going to only have the situation to proc her ult, not super often, so you should be able to deal with it uh, every time. Um, I trust Will to be able to, or I trust uh, Garrett to be able to play this matchup quite well um, into Will, but obviously the Nautilus and Volibear enabling the Samira do add another layer to this. Um, that should be all the stuff uh, we want to look at here. So I'm going to take a break from talking real quick uh, to just kind of eat um, some food because uh, I'm having dinner right now. All right, we have about a minute left of spectator delay. Uh, my predictions for this game are that uh, Metabusters is really gonna have to win through the bot lane uh, and the Camille jungle. I think those are the really um, two strong points of their draft. Uh, Honan is also really good in the Cho'Gath. Um, so expect him to be as strong as some of the solo laners in this game. However, I do think it's gonna be really easy to get the Akali and Azir fed. It might make more sense for the uh, Volibear Jackson to just focus on the soul lanes and try and get the Akali or Azir super fed and try and carry the game that way. Um, I do like that we have um, high impact champions for both Rogue and Aya here. I think uh, something that 
the Valor and Pirates have struggled with in the past is putting them on lower impact champions, so they haven't really had the agency um, to kind of carry games even if they've gotten huge leads. Um, bot lane is definitely going to be the place to watch, though, because if Garrett and Honin aren't able to get a lead, I think it's going to be pretty doomed for uh, the Meta Busters, and we might see a comfortable first game for the Valor and Pirates. Are loading in game right now. Um, I don't have a mouse, so I'm gonna hope that uh, my scrolling skills are good enough to actually zoom out of this game. Okay. Two fingers swipe up and down is the way to do it. Um, I was trying to zoom in and out the other way. It looks like we're having some five man um, behavior going on here. Uh, and we have the wrong game border too, so uh, shout out to me for that one. Looks like we're having some early invading stuff going here. Um, cool, perfect. That one was really easy, and it's got the wrong game. This is not King Grooming Service uh, versus the Silicats. Um, super surprising to everyone, I'm sure. And that is also not the right thing. There we go, okay. Sorry about that. Um, we should be good now. Um, looks like the play's just gonna fizzle. Uh, both teams got vision on the red buff on red side. So it's gonna kinda neutralize out, but they'll know when the Camille gets up there. Um, shout out to Noam, new name, uh, Yom Kippur Warrior. Uh, super base name, love it. Uh, from what I heard, uh, that name was not actually possible to get, but he has it now, so that's what really matters here. As expected, Volibear with no leash is clearing faster than Camille with a leash. Um, seems like both of these solo laners for MVP are looking pretty comfortable. Uh, Hidiri is playing pretty well though. Um, was able to proc. Oh, I guess he doesn't have Aftershock. But was able to get uh, the Q to hit the Akali there and move her away. Looks like we might have an early Camille gank. Um, but I was just bot lane playing very aggressively despite having level one. Oh, and the stun does not hit from the Camille. Looking to get a play down. Forces Aya's flash, though. Honestly, probably the best you're going to get out of the play after the Camille stun doesn't hit. And Noam is just immediately backing, it looks like. Oh, no, it goes in. Aya is chain CC'd here, is going to be able to get out. Uh, maybe. Garrett flashes and hone in, secures the first blood with his Cho'Gath. And this is exactly what I was talking about. This man is going to be as strong um, as a solo laner in this game, most likely. Oh, you can see Rex DMing me, uh, hating. It says, Nexus Plus never exists. It will come back soon, please. Uh, praying on that, surely. And Will is just getting harassed off the wave here. Uh, is actually maintaining um, even CS, which is really good to see. Uh, but that will likely not be the case anymore unless he's able to grab some under tower, which actually he should be able to now that I is uh, returned, especially with the minion demats. Oh, Hadiri should probably just be dead here. A Volibear going for the gank. Uh, Hadiri is able to buffer the E, which is pretty good. And now he still has W to get out of any other CC, so uh, able to save himself really well there. And somehow Silico's out farming Valor in the mid lane, so um, we want to see a spicy mid matchup, and we certainly are. Uh, that is not how that matchup is normally supposed to go. 
Valor stopping the base, throwing the this is fine Soraka emote. Super hype behavior. And Hidiri is trolling here. Just walks into the Akali, gets ignited, and is just killed. Um, did not realize that uh, Heroic was hiding in the bush and pays the price for it. Early kill onto the Akali with a Dark Seal. This is going to be terrible to deal with. We'll say though, luckily Zaya ulti should be able to save her from uh, the Akali, but if they layer their CC correctly, um, it's going to be really hard for Garrett to play it, right? Uh, Jackson does have to burn the flash. Silica goes through the wall and gives a kill over to the jungle Camille. Uh, both strong points of this map are doing really well for Metabusters. Uh, Honan flashes in, blocks the hook uh, that was going to go into Garrett. Garrett tries to get out, drops down really low. Honan is going to have to get both of these kills. Or, never mind, Gnome shows up, is able to pick up another kill, and Gnome should have three kills. Nope, gives another one over to Honan. So two kills Honan, two kills Noam. Really strong start of the game to Metabusters. They're looking to show that despite the fact that they're 0-2, they're still a huge contender this season. Um, and are going to try and pick up uh, their first game win here. Yeah, and Hadiri's just getting hard outplayed in this lane. Akali should just be able to dance all over the Ornn, so not really his fault. Uh, just a bad matchup. I am really hoping he's not the one who called for it in draft, though. That would be a bit unfortunate. Um, Six is hit by Akali. Uh, she has already used the first dash, tries to use the second one to get out. I was able to do it, but neither of them are going to pick up a kill, so Hadiri actually did play that super well. That's Akali's, like, highest level of kill threat on the Orn. And now she's just going to have to try and impact the map around him, because um, if Deary plays it right, he should not die here. Um, no one is going for a play down on the bot side. Uh, I'll have to see how that goes, but Jackson is there to counter gank, so it looks like no one's just going to disengage and not go for it. Um, and Deary might end up dying here. Huge E hit, but E's after Heroic goes. It's just not going to matter, though. Um, another kill for the Akali. Heroic taking Conk here is great. Um, in the longer lane, Ornn isn't really going to poke you out, so you don't need the fleet footwork. And Conker is going to help you uh, stack up the extra damage needed to take down the Ornn. Especially in those longer trades. And four stacks in the Dark Seal is going to be brutal. Um, Honan does get hooked. It's not really going to matter, though. Mid lane CS is back where we'd expect it to be. Never mind. Graves is now stepped back up. Uh, really just playing this super well. Making the most of a tough lane. Is actually just starting with the dragon on his own. Um, but it's on a ward, so this is actually going to be pretty tough. There could be just a collapse here, but Jackson's on the opposite side of the map, so. Who knows? Yeah, despite the vision, uh, MVP isn't able to do anything here, so they're able to just pick up uh, the first dragon for Meta Busters. Deary looking for a crazy play here, is actually able to get um, two Brittle procs, is looking for a third, but if he walks up, he might just die. Uh, gets the fourth one marked, but is not going to be able to proc either of the last two, so kind of rough. Jackson steals away the red buff. Um, he's been farming a lot better than uh, Noam, but Noam's been ganking a lot better, so kind of push and pull there. And Hidiri is just going to die here, most likely. Yeah, Big Knight comes out. Um, and now Noam's in a tough spot. It's going to have to 1v2 this, but it's doing really well into the Volibear, and honestly, Akali is no threat to him. Except Jackson is doing super well here and just solo kills Noam. 
Well played to Jackson there. Knows his champ's limits. Knows he can just hold six. Noam tries to get something done with Exit Ultimatum, just isn't able to do it. The flash ult from Azir is brutal there. Silico may be able to get out, though. Yeah, that's a lot committed um, from Valor. And Silco didn't need to burn Barrier or Flash there to survive. Um, Honan's here for backup, but Silco really can't help. He's just going to get poked out by Azir. Um, and Aya flashes under tower. The Barrier comes out, keeping him alive. Oh my god, Silco gets a kill here. They get two! There is absolutely no shot. Noam and Silco both pick up a kill. Insane outplay for Meta Busters. There's no other way to put it. Silco had no reason to be able to live that play, and he's able to pick up a kill and not die. Adiri's trying to get out here. Akali still has ultimate. Is just going to use it as Adiri throws his ulti. Really good timing by Heroic. Heroic's going to fall down low. But Jackson's here to support this. Flashes. Adiri is not going to survive this. Noam is super low to be trying to fight this. Um, Bobbear does not have ulti, and he does, but... Still close. Uh, gold leads back to even. Um, I don't think it has been even since the start of the game, uh, but we're back here. I'm next dragging this out for a minute and a half. And Metabusters do have the first one. Orin having four deaths is a little bit rough, uh, but this was kind of just coming uh, when you pick the Orin into the Akali. She's just naturally going to do super well. Garrus in a really tough spot here. Might have to burn ulti. Does. The early cleanse comes out um, from Will, and I just think that that means he's going to die. Uh, Honin walks in, gets the ult stack, and another kill goes over to Zaya. So this is a four kill bot lane um, for the Metabusters, and they have reclaimed the gold lead by about a thousand. And having a really strong bot side going into the next dragon fight is just going to be really good news all around. Silco drops down low. Uh, Jackson's ult does not hit the tower, so he's safe. Um, burns the collateral damage just as an extra dash to get him under tower there. Really smart move. Uh, Valor is quite low here. There could be a dive, but I is here to cover. Huge hook buffer from Aya, although she's going to drop down quite low, and Camille's just going to pick up the kill. That's four for Noam at uh, 12 minutes in this game. Jackson's going to fall down low again. A fifth kill for Noam. He's making Camille jungle look OP. Like, what year are we in? 2018? Honestly, the most unfortunate thing about this game for the Metabusters uh, is the fact that uh, Noam seems to not have IG Camille, um, which is the Camille jungle skin. Uh, Would have been great to see that repped. Um, and we can't really gift it to him either because uh, world skins are not out right now. Heroic is going in. It's not able to get anything here, though. Thrift Child deployed in the mid lane. Silico's going to try and stop this, but... I could not stop the charge here. Um, they're going to look for a kill on Valor here. Ooh, Camille really screws up the E-Flash there. Uh, I hate to see it. A 
That's a tough play to make, though. Even if you do hit the E-Flash, because Hextag Ultimatum is not up. So Zier can simply just get out. Hook comes down, and Jackson's here to finish it off. Honan is just going to die here. Uh, Zai has to burn ult and flash to survive. Um, he's building Kraken instead of Gilfor, so a little bit less safety. And the tower's down, um, and Garrett's just going to get dove. There's nothing he can do here. Uh, Jackson's going to go down low, but not enough. Will walks back through tower. That auto attack on the minion almost caused him to die, but uh, he's able to get out safe. Silico's looking to clean this up, though. Um, they're going to spot him out, because he walked down on a ward. Uh, and now Valor's here uh, to secure his Silico's death. Um, he has flash and collateral damage, but he's not going to get anything done here. Burns barrier to try and stall out, but there just isn't a play for him anymore. I love the attempt by Silico, but he's just not able to get anything done. Rogue is going to brutalize Noam here. Uh, Hextag Ultimatum is going to help Hidiri win this, uh, but Hidiri realistically has no shot to win no matter what. Um, this should just be a double kill picked up for the Akali, and that would be her 10th stack on the Dark Seal. Yep. Heroic dominating top lane. Warren picks up Jack Show. Not going to help him enough. is desperately trying to CC this Azir is just not able to do it. If they face check uh, this Rift Herald play, it's going to be really poorly for them. Uh, Garrett is trying to 1v1 Will, pops the exhaust and ulti to counter it. Um, and yet another weird cleanse is coming out for Will, but just gets so much damage, is able to get those solo kill in the bot lane. Amazing stuff. And it honestly looks like mid lane was the most boring lane so far this game. Um, and looks like Valor and Pirates have a lead literally everywhere else, so it's gonna be a rough game for the Meta Busters. This fight's so fight uh, so tough for the Meta Busters. Uh, Jackson initiates it with his ultimate, and Heroic just immediately follows up. This is triple kill for the Akali. Um, and the Nothug does disconnect, so Silica has a chance to get out here. Um, the Heroic's fishing for his fourth kill of the fight. Um, Silico pops a Gore Drinker. Oh, wait, Heroic might die. Shut down? Yeah, Silico picks up the shutdown on the Akali. I believe that was 950 gold. That's the only way that play was remotely salvageable for the Meta Busters. Uh, Heroic does just greed, dies under tower. Uh, Will's trying for another play, but he eats a tower shot there, so it's going to be a little rough. Valor's in a tough spot here, but he's just able to get himself out with the Shifting Sands. Um, and Deary's ultimate is burned onto one person and doesn't even get a kill, which is super rough to see. Um, Knockup does come down onto the Vala Bear, but Heroic's in the fight. Does get trapped by the Hexac Ultimatum. Jackson is going to fall first, but Heroic is just picking up so much, does fall again to Silico. Although Will's on the back line and is able to ult the Inferno Trigger, is able to pick up one. Silico might just die here. Valor drops down so low. The Gore Drinker comes in huge, but... That's just not enough. Triple kill the will. Complimented by one kill um, for Heroic. Trying to get those Dark Seal stacks back is now at five. And Will just wins this if Adiri tries to step up, so he's not going to do that. Um, we do see pings down that the Unleashed Teleport is ready. 
Um, two drakes are over to the side of Metabusters here, but they're not going to be able to pick up this third one, at least um, for the time being. Sakali is so threatening for them to deal with. Fury again caught out in a weird position. Uh, he's able to just get out this time though, but Jackson goes onto the back line, is instantly collapsed on, but he's just too fast. Oh, I hit the hook on Basilico. Basilico is a good target to hit here. Heroic has also has his E marked down, and it, the Orn ultimate just gets windwalled. Will goes in, but Will's just getting caught up into the chain CC down. Is able to get the Inferno Trigger off, but is able to trade Hidiri for his life. Um, Jackson is quite low. Heroic goes in, is able to pick up a double kill. The Camille falls down. Silico is trying to kill Heroic here, but it's going to be so hard. The knockup from Honing comes in huge, though. Silico spaces perfectly and is able to get the kill. Silico has been playing out of his mind this game. Not quite the carry performance we saw from him last week, but he is trying his damnedest. And if he's able to get skilled, this could be super rough. He has yet to complete his second item. Um, but is consistently outplaying Heroic, who's sitting on two, so... Honan's walking up, he does kind of get outranged here, but Valor is just chain CC'd. Goes for the E... E plus Ign Oh, the... Really well played by Valor there. He's able to get the shifting stance to keep himself alive. The shield is just enough. Um, Honan tried to get the kill, chomped down early and then through the ignite to try and finish him off, but it just does not work. Hadiri is going for this play. You just absolutely do not have what it takes to kill the Akali. Um, Hextech Ultimatum is there to back him up, but I don't think it's going to be enough, and Heroic knows that he has no ability to chase him, so he just walks out. I think what's happening down in the bot lane is what happens when the support gets too many kills and the ADC just doesn't get enough in the early game. Um, it led to Garrett just not having enough damage to win those outright 1v1s versus Samira, as well as just being the worst 1v1 champion. So, kind of rough. Not what you're looking for. Um, if you are a Metabusters fan, they're down about 4k gold, but are by no means out of this game. Um, ornaments should be coming in in a couple levels. Um, Heroic is just going to pick up another solo kill here. There's no way he doesn't. Um, so they're going to have to disengage. And this Baron might just be on the table for the Valor and Pirates. Um, Silico is absolutely gapping Valor in this first game. There's no debate of that. Um, so to solve uh, who wins the 1v1 in the first game, uh, definitely goes to Silico. We'll be able to see if he has any ability to keep his team alive here, but... I sincerely doubt it. They're going to look for this steal, but Heroic's just going to go over the wall and probably get both of these. Um, at least zoning them off from it. I know no one would love to be able to steal this uh, Baron, but he just doesn't have it in him. Um, Garrett's able to pick up a turret in the mid lane, so making the most of a tougher situation. And the Baron does go over to all five members uh, of the Valorant Pirates. There's a huge collapse coming down onto Valor, but he's able to get the Baron empowered back, so um, there's just no threat there. Uh, they don't realize that he backed under tower. They must have not uh, had vision of it. And it's really hard for them to capture this bot tower in return uh, because of the Azir turret. Valor playing his macro super well there. Uh, shout out to Metabusters here. They were able to leverage um, their free time during the Baron to really just mitigate the gold deficit that they could be facing there. Um, again, Hadiri in a really tough spot here. Um, just gets solo kill again. Um, it is pretty tough. Heroic going in is trying to get Honin, is able to get Honin, um, but Noam's able to get the trade, but Silico's just dying. 
Um, they must have found him uh, isolated under mid tower and just gone for the pickup. But Croak and Wills leads these game. This game is too big. Um, I don't think that they're really able to lose here. This Baron push is going to get a lot done for them. They might be able to pick up a Nexus turret, um, especially with the size of this wave coming in. And Garrett gets hit by a hook, which is going to stop his ability to wave clear. Uh, Jackson does get rooted and exhausted under tower. He might die for this, but the damage of Will is just too much here. Uh, Call of the Forge God comes down. Will gets knocked up, and Gnome's going in. Gnome should be able to potentially pick up both of these kills, but he's chained CC for so long. Um, both of them are going to drop. But uh, Valor's here to focus Noam. Um, Hexap Ultimatum is not up. Will it does fall, so that's a triple kill for uh, the side of the Metabusters. Noam desperately tries to get the stun, but I think Valor's just out now, gets knocked up though. Uh, Honan is huge in this game, and he's shifting sands over the walls to a sand soldier. Starts sweeping, checking for vision. Um, is gonna find a ward. Silico's gonna look for this, decides against it though. Yeah, and the blind queue over the wall was super close, but not in the right spot to stop him because he still has that um, Baron Empowered Recall. <laughs> Will, I assume, is talking about Valor's great escape there. It was very fun to watch. And we have talked a lot about uh, Akali's Dark Seal this game, but. Um, Ravenous Hydra does kind of work in the same way, so Noam dying there uh, does cause him to lose some of the stacks. Uh, we do get to see the Ward Sweeper changes there. Um, we got to see it show up in light blue in the bush, which is kind of new and interesting. Okay, Grok is getting collapsed on. Hexac Ultimatum is here. Uh, but is not used yet. Call the Forge God goes down. Silico's in a, such a tough spot here. It has no way to get out over the wall. And he's just getting bursted down. Heroic goes in. Really good movement. Is able to dodge all the feathers. Um, but this is... It does actually end up falling to Noam. But that's a three for one. They're able to eliminate the Akali. But it costs three of their teammates to do it. Four now. And Hadiri is just going to get run down. They should just be able to end the game here. Well executed by the entirety of Mass Battle Iron Pirates here. No one on their team uh, played poorly at all, but uh, obviously MVP is going over to Heroic. Uh, he absolutely dominated this game. Um, tore it apart in the top lane, and there was no one who could stop him. All right, well, GG's to MVP for the first game. Um, next game should happen uh, somewhat shortly.
All right, the next draft is gonna be happening in about four minutes. Uh, so let's go over some of the highlights going into the next game. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Metabusters was not able to pick up their first win of the season. Uh, unfortunately, losing that game and Mass Valor and Pirates uh, showing some dominance, especially Heroic. Heroic's been a huge strong point for them this season. Um, dominant in the top lane, especially with these really good matchups that he's been getting. A lot of them are counter picks, uh, and in this game, unfortunately, um, Metabusters kind of counter picked themselves. Uh, so, not necessarily what you want to see from them. Champions to watch are going to be likely unchanged. Um, as I predicted. Um, and then our key matchup is going to be the same thing. Um, well, let me hop into private browser real quick so I can get um, the updated match data. Because we would like to talk about what happened in the previous game uh, for sure. Uh, boop, boop, boop. Sorry about the delay. I should be able to get us the correct content um, right about now. Um, just delete that. All right, okay. Yeah, so I believe nothing is still changed on these champions to watch. Um, not that you would expect anything really to. Um, and okay, here we go. We have one matchup. Valor's stats look a lot better here, the 11 KDA, um, one and zero. However, I do believe Silico outplayed in this first game. Um, he just didn't have the team to back him up and Valor was able to kind of benefit from his team playing really well around him. Uh, he only died once. Uh, Silico is kind of forced to put himself out there and try and make some plays. So we'll be able to see if Silico is able to get more done this game. Um, okay. Uh, slideshow is being a little touchy right now. Um, so let's just look at Heroic again. Um, obviously Heroic was the focal point for them the last game. The Akali was absolutely disgusting. His stats just look slightly better here. Um, because of that great performance, um, we could see something like that again. And then the last thing I want to look at one more time is it's going to be Hadiri again. Um, this is a player that I'd like to see perform a lot better um, in this upcoming game. Uh, especially just utilizing this counter pick a lot better. He picked a matchup that was super hard for him to get um, too much done in. And he def definitely suffered the consequences of that. So uh, ideally he'll be able to put up a better performance uh, going into this next game. And I do think he has it in him. Um, something to note is he is recovering from a long COVID. Uh, so it's a bit rough. Uh, I think some brain fog is definitely involved there. But I do think he has this. Uh, just needs to utilize draft a little bit better to get himself set up and not have uh, such a doomed matchup. Um, speaking of draft, uh, we should be heading into it any moment now. And as we see, uh, the Valorant Pirates do have a win uh, going into this game. So if they're able to grab this one, uh, they will wrap up this series 2-0. Um, and Metabusters do have a chance to bring it uh, to the third game of this series if they're able to grab this one up. Uh, looks like the same band's coming out from the Valorant Pirates for now. Um, we will have to see that continues. Um, okay, yeah, these bands are looking pretty similar to what we saw last game. Um, we might see something else uh, with this third band, but nope. Same exact stuff. I wonder if we're going to see Samira blind picked again. Uh, it certainly worked, but Twitch is... or Twitch. <laughs> okay, uh... Got a little caught up in my words there. I was gonna say, Will's known for swapping things up mid-series, so it's not a surprise to see the Twitch come out here. Um, he let it go in the first game, but if you give him this Twitch twice, he's gonna take it. Um, it might be a little bait, but realistically, I don't think anything is gonna stop Will from performing on Twitch. He is just too good on this champion. You cannot let him have it. Um, also, Aya could just play it support, so uh, there's a lot of flex potential going on here. It looks like this pick is just going to roll over. Nothing selected from it. Oh, nope, never mind. They grabbed Cho'Gath. Uh, I do think it performed really well. Um, I'd like to see them kind of mix it up a bit and try and experiment because uh, it did not do well going um, later on into the game. But this is still a very, very good flex champion. I believe it's viable in five of the roles, 
or four of the rolls, five if you count um, Starving Senna. And the next lock-in is going to be Karthus. Uh, this could go uh, probably anywhere, honestly. I think this champion is literally viable in all five positions. Um, I don't think there's one where you can't play it. Um, so far this season, it's only been played support, uh, but it can go anywhere. Um, I would honestly expect to see Silico play this mid lane, but I do think it's just left open as a flex. Uh, could go uh, anywhere. Okay, and Poppy is getting picked up, which is actually pretty surprising. Usually the only person in the server who plays Poppy is Joel. Um, he is definitely known for that pick, but uh, clearly this is not Joel because he's not in this game. Uh, so I believe this is probably going to be Jackson um, picking it, or it could be Aya playing Poppy support, which would be pretty interesting. But I'm expecting it to just be a pick for Jackson. Um, his champion pool has been out a little bit, and he might just not want to play Volibear again. I do believe this is going to be Aya or Will's pick. It could be either. Um, Seraphine, pretty, pretty good flex champion. I believe it is viable mid, AD carry, and support, uh, at least in my opinion. Um, so we could see anyone really picking this up. Uh, could be a potential counter to Karthus. Uh, hard outranges it. And we see Morgana locked in. This, again, could really go a lot of different places. Um, so Metabuster's draft, uh, I think basically any three combination of roles could be covered here. So we really don't know um, what to ban if you're on the side of the Valorant Pirates, which I really like. The um, uh, insane amount of draft flexibility here. Uh, this entire season has been really good for meta busters. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to execute um, on their drafts too, too much, uh, which is something that they can definitely work on and improve, but their drafting's been off to a really good start. Uh, Volibear is banned. I don't necessarily see the point in doing this because I doubt that the Poppy's going to go top, and if Heroic is going to pick something um, like the Poppy, I don't think he's going to have the potential to carry as hard as he did in the previous game, so you might just let him have it. Um, Pantheon is banned away. Uh, I'm not necessarily sure what that would be for. Um, could be a lot of lanes, but just a champion that they don't want to deal with. Um, what I would probably look to ban for MVP here is uh, some AD carries that you're scared of, just because that is definitely something that the meta busters need to round out their team comp. And Zach is banned. They must really not think this is a poppy jungle, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, they might have some insight that I don't know about, um, about this poppy going somewhere else, but I really just think it's going to be the jungler. And this last ban from MVP is going to be Akshan. Um, maybe. Yes. Okay. I think that is actually a good ban. That's some ranged uh, AD DPS. Uh, which is exactly what you want to prevent the meta busters from having. And that's another champion that can be flexed in a lot of roles. So it actually covers a lot. I think Pantheon um, is another good ban in that sense. So I think I kind of gave it less credit than it deserved when I mentioned it earlier. Um, it's able to cover a lot of different lanes. And the, the gangplank for either Silico or Hadiri goes hard here. Um, ranged AD damage, not necessarily as DPS y as you'd want it to be. Um, but it's a really good top mid flex. You don't really know what you're getting. Um, I'd assume it's going to be Morgana. I actually, I just, I don't know. Any of these champions could really go anywhere. Um, I probably won't even know once the last pick is locked in. Uh, so we'll have to see. Aatrox is picked um, into the gangplank. Huge carry potential on that uh, champion for heroic. We'll have to see how well he does. Uh, Aatrox is not doing particularly well in terms of strength right now, but it does do really well in the Gangplank, so I think the pick is very justified. Um, I'd like to see Heroic perform super well on it, and Valor picks the Silas. This champion for him is disgusting. It's a miracle that this got through draft. I don't think anyone else has let it through draft. Um, we'll have to see what the counter is. I think GP into Silas is actually probably pretty fine. Um... In terms of non-ultimate interactions, uh, the Silas GP ult is disgusting. You also have Silas Cho'Gath ult, so if either of those champions are in a solo lane, um, that's bad news. And we have the Zed picked up. What in earth is going on here? Um, yeah, I, I don't think I would have predicted this uh, team composition in a million years. I don't know where anything is going. 
Um, it does kind of confirm that those uh, jungle bands were wasted, um, which I guess is interesting, but... Wow, yeah, I um, I don't know what to make of the meta Wester's comp. They've certainly busted the meta. I don't have anything else to say about it. They have a better damage spread than last game, at least. Uh, but they have, like, half an early game champion. Um, and everything else is super late. Or I guess you have a whole early game champion if you count, like, partially Morgana, partially Zed. Um, but Karthus, Cho'Gath, and Gangplank are all hard scaling. Um, so you're likely just going to get steamrolled, um, especially if it's the AP Twitch support um, and the Seraphine carry. I think that's going to be even stronger than um, the other combination there, just because you're able to snowball the game before any of these champions can come online. Um, but Poppy, Aatrox, Silas, all these champions are going to spike way harder than you, way earlier than you. So it's going to be um, very rough to deal with. Um, I expect MVP to run over this game, um, honestly, despite uh, what the lane assignments may be. Okay, I'm being walled out of the lobby by people refusing to spectate a true tragedy of the modern era. Um, the only thing we know is that Hideri is playing top and Silico is playing mid. Um, that doesn't really help us at all figure out what these lane assignments are. I'm going to guess it's Gangplank top, Zed mid, into Silas. But it kind of falls apart after that. Um, any of these champions could go anywhere. Like, the bot lane could be any... Um, combination of these. Oh, wait, there's no shot. That's absurd. Okay, um, because of how the spectator client works, I don't exactly know um, what's going on here. Uh, I'm going to ask what these rules are, <laughs> um, so I can get this right. Uh, because League Spectate is uh, kind of screwing me over. Um, so we will kind of have to see uh, what goes on here. Cool. Uh, so they're just loading into the game wrong because they invited me, so that actually makes this um, a lot uh, more sensible. I thought we were seeing some crazy Silico, Jungle, Zed, Flex tech. Um, not what we're seeing. Um, kind of unfortunate, to be honest. And I believe that the Twitch is going to be uh, ADC. Um, so just filling out the champions real quick. Uh, we should be able to um, look at these matchup stats pretty soon. Okay, very interesting. Yeah, so I thought there was a possibility that they were throwing um, Zed jungle and then Karthus mid lane and then like Morgana Cho'Gath bot lane. Um, unfortunately, that's not gonna happen. That would be super hype, uh, but we're actually uh, just going to see as follows if I can get there real quick. Um, interesting. Oh, it's because I'm not showing it. Okay, so the chat matchups, there's no data for any of this. Not surprising at all, um, except maybe the top matchup. Um, champions to watch, we already saw. Player matchups are just going to be what we saw before. Will and Garrett are now a little bit closer. Um, first timing on the Aatrox and the Poppy. Valerie Silas, disgusting. Silica Zed, also disgusting. Um, Will has performed really well on this Twitch versus the first time Garrett Karthus. Aya has performed very well in the Seraphine. Um, so is Honan Cho'Gath, though, so nothing too crazy. Noam, not so hot on the Morgana, but here he's performed really well on the GP. So it kind of evens out across the map. 
Um, season records, Gangplague and Aatrox both not doing too well. Poppy, disgustingly good. I will attribute most of that to Joel. Um, as we've talked about recently, Silas has been dominating this season. Um, so I'll expect to see that do pretty well. Uh, Morgana, Zed, Karthus, all pretty even. Um, and then I believe Chogath we already talked about and Seraphine and Twitch are not super notable here. The overall records, again, nothing too crazy here. Um, Silas, just a very good performer in the server. Morgana, a bit lackluster, surprisingly. I'm just going to throw this up here real quick, and I will roll so I can simply just finish my food, hopefully, if I have time. Um, it looks like we have oh, 50 seconds left of spectator, so probably not going to have time to finish my meal. Uh, so I'll just eat during the game. Okay, I was being trolled there for a little bit, but we are on the rift. Um, looks like Metabusters is expecting the same invade to come up from MVP, but I just don't think that's going to happen. Uh, they're not going to try the same thing um, back to back. Um, oh, so it is actually going to be Twitch support. Um, very interesting. They load in as different roles, but uh, so do the other team. I'm just going to update these real quick. Joy of support, as we expected. Um, there's not going to be any early plays here. Um, we could look to see the Twitch support go for some cheese. Looks like Will's gonna go for a play on the top side, just killed the GP immediately. They're looking to snowball through Heroic again, and it could just very well happen. He has Hail of Blades, he's gonna do a lot of damage early on here. And he shows up right behind Hideri, the Ignite gets dropped early. Forces the flash out immediately. Um, unfortunately for Twitch, he's gonna want that kill early to get the goal, and it's not gonna get it. And Eye's in a tough spot here, just potentially gonna get punished. And Will is just going to stay here and just harass Hideri. It's going to make him very hard for him to play the game. And Balor is trading super well early in this game.
Yeah, Valerie's playing super well here. Hadiri is in a tough spot. That has zero CS so far. Not even able to get any with his Q. Um, and Will showed up back in the bot lane. Could be looking for a play. Uh, Silco is doing his best to hold uh, mid lane at an even state. It's actually slightly ahead in terms of CS. So credit, credit to him there. Um, Hadiri will hopefully be able to get his first CS, but he is getting taken down so low first blood before Hadiri is even able to get CS. Hadiri has no teleport, so he's not going to be able to get back to lane here. Really tragic stuff. Again, he's put in a spot where he just has a losing matchup, and it's really hard for him to play the game. Uh, Will's looking to get stuff done on Nahonen, um, and Aya is trying to get out, but the slow comes down, so she has to flash. Um, Will's able to get Honen down quite low here. Valor missing the E2. Oh my god, Gary gets rooted. He should just be dead. Got a Twitch poison. Does fall. Uh, Noam's looking for a kill here. Uh, Jackson and Aya are both quite low. The shield comes out to try and save Will. Does do it. And that's another kill for Will. Jackson flashes in. There's almost a triple kill for Will, but the other kill does go over to Jackson, who does end up dying to Honan. That's a 4-1 beginning of this game. Uh, utter dominance by uh, the Alleran Pirates, the league I expected from draft. Um, Will has double buffs, and he's going to harass the entire map. There's going to be nothing you can do to this switch. And Heroic is just dominating the top side. If he flashes, he gets the kill here, does not even need to do it. Uh, uses the dash to just gap close. The Ignite is not enough to stop him from doing it. Just a masterclass of top lane here. Oh, and Will should just be able to shred Noam here. Noam walks up, starts auto-attacking the control ward. Will is going to get rooted, but he just has so much more damage than the Morgano does. <sighs> Unfortunately, he was not able to E before the spell shield ran out, so a lot of that damage is going to get mitigated, but um, the Morgano is going to be very weak in her own jungle, and uh, Jackson should be able to find a play here. Uh, spot out on a control ward, though, so Hadiri should be able to stay alive. Uh, he's at a very tough spot in terms of CS, though. Uh, Will is here to kind of mitigate this counterplay. Honan should end up dying here. The Zed ult comes down onto him, and that's so much damage. And Twitch is able to pick up yet another kill on a killing spree. Has bought the Dark Seal, so it's two stacks uh, on that so far. And Kadiri should just end up dying here. Um, never mind, it looks like Heroic did not have a dash available to keep the, the play going. Has World Ender up, so could make a play soon, but... It's probably just going to wait till his uh, CDs are back. Alright, now that Hidiri has some levels, he's been able to trade back pretty decently. But it's still just getting absolutely chunked. A uh, very tough lane for the Gangplank, especially with the Twitch uh, kind of helping uh, the Aatrox out earlier in the game. Valor does have a losing trade there, but the level up is actually going to be able to help him a lot, so not as bad as it could have been. Uh, Jackson is playing very well around this. Uh, does dash. The spell shield doesn't prevent him from dashing, which works out well. The long range Seraphine ulti, huge play by Aya, and that's another kill over for Will. He has 5 KP out of 8. Yep, and there we go. World Ender is popped, as I said earlier. And honestly, Aatrox is like the most satisfying champion to watch solo kills on. Especially when he pops like the flash after one of his Qs. It just looks so cool. Silico is able to just burst Jackson down here, remove the smite. Um, 
from the Valorant Pirates here. Honan's able to pick up a kill, does not get it with his ultimate, um, but Valor is able to stack Cho'Gath ulti, just gets a little bit taller after that one, and takes down Garrett before the dragon. Uh, it looks like Valorant Pirates are not interested in finishing off this play, and are instead of trying to hunt down um, Silgo in the mid lane. Groic actually out of abilities to finish off that kill. So he's just going to disengage a little bit. Um, Tadiri does get to live uh, for a little bit longer. The Eclipse is purchased on the Aatrox. No longer has any sort of healing on it. But does still have that burst damage to just quickly burst down the squishy GP. Silico picks up the... Uh, Early Executioner is calling, trying to prevent uh, Silas from out-healing him. Not sure how effective it's going to be, though. Valor is quite strong, as you'd expect from him on Silas, and Hidiri is just going to get solo killed again. Um, Heroic having a banger series here. Huge strong point for this team. Yeah, this top lane turret is just going to fall. Um, GP with no teleport is not able to stop stuff like this from happening, which is just pretty unfortunate. Um, so this Aatrox is going to have a huge lead, and it's now just proxying. Um, whoever metabusters are able to make a play across the map, grab their early dragon, and the Karthus soul comes down, trying to maybe help out in this play, but Heroic picks up a fifth soul to kill this game. I mean, that's got to be... A lot for this series. I'm not uh, quite sure how many, but really well played. Good reaction time from Valor there to dodge that. Um, although the Morgana was on vision, so that definitely helps. Garrett did just blow the ult. I'm not sure if he was able to pick up a Dark Harvest stack or not. Um, doesn't have first strike, so the gold incentive there um, is just not present. He has three Dark Harvest stacks right now, so not great, but not like terrible either. Um, Silico is trying to get this kill, but the healing from Silas is just too much through the Executioner's Calling, but um, is actually able to pick it up. Uh, gets the kill. The Grievous Wounds from the Ignite uh, was able to get it done. Uh, Hadiri might just fall down here again. The Lethality is a lot, but no, Hadiri spaces very well and is able to get out of this play. No, I'm here to make sure that Hadiri can maybe farm up some of these minions, but it's just going to be rough. Looks like Zed's probably also going for the Eclipse, but we could see a Dust Blade coming out. Um, both items are pretty strong. For some reason, all chat looks really weird. Uh, double brackets around the all instead of just a single one. Uh, I wonder what Riot is doing with their patches these days. Um, maybe the hacker added that as a little contribution. Who knows? Um, Valor and Silco are trading again here. Um, Silico just getting out-traded there. Um, really good spacing and timing uh, by Valor to get something done. Um, looks like they're pretty even this game, though, and Adrian is just getting stuff done uh, in the jungle here, looking to steal the blue buff. And Ayu's just playing super well here uh, on her own in the solo lane. Um, the root, oh my god, heroic spaces into the blue buff so that it eats the root. And Aya, oh my god, her aiming of these skill shots in this fight was just insane. Couldn't have asked for a better uh, surfing play there. 
and Poppy is trying to just knock Kadiri off the turret, not letting me get any tower plates. Um, although maybe he's able to pick up one. Uh, now Heroic is just looking for the Karthus here. And boom. Heroic is 6-0. Oh. Uh, Honan is in a bad spot here. Um, does get rooted, and that is a kill over to Aya. Although Silica is looking to pick something up on the backside of this, is not able to get it done. Yeah, and this is just four people around Silico under tower. Throws a team at Emo, is looking to pick up Will here. Um, Will has not backed in a while, but the healing uh, from the Seraphine is too much, but Karthus all comes down and is able to pick up Will, and I assume got one or two Dark Harvest products there. Um, exactly what I see from Garrett punishing um, the play from Will. Will's able to back and finally is able to purchase um, on all his gold. Um, but loses all of his Dark Seal stocks for that, so a uh, bit of a cocky play. Valor's sitting on a ward, uh, so no simply just walks out, smites, and has a spell shield to stop all the stuns. Uh, alts onto Valor. Valor is able to get out. Uh, Ignite's just dropping down everywhere, and Valor follows Silico's ult so well there. Uh, is not able to pick up the kill. Um, misses some skill shots. Uh, Will is just going to ult Hidiri. Uh, Hidiri never stood a chance there. Um, solo Bolo, fourth Twitch, two more stacks on the Dark Seal. And honestly, Heroic can win this. Uh, the World Ender increased healing is just disgusting. Easiest solo kill of his life coming out of that bush. Um, and the Morgana and Shogath together are actually going to be too much for him. Uh, Black Shield makes it really hard for him to win fights uh, because he's not going to get any knockups on his Q, which is how he's able to win um, a lot of these skirmishes. Will coming down, sweeping some vision. Um, Metabusters has had very good dragon control this series. Um, despite them not doing very well across the map, their objective control has been pretty good. Um, so shout out to them for that. Um, they might be able to pick up these first two dragons here. Jackson is getting chunked down below. Um, half health. And Silica goes in, but gets grounded. Um, unable to get anything done. And Noam is gone. Uh, but Silica is able to pick up the kill on the Poppy. And Space is super well with his Ws, but now there's just too many members of Valor and Pirates there for him to get anything done. Uh, Valor does fall, but so much damage from the Twitch, Aatrox, and Seraphine. They're able to pick up two more kills there, but only a two for three for them. Um, very well played by Metabusters to mitigate that loss. Um, unfortunately, Noam is not going to be able to contest this dragon. Um, knocked out of the fight by the Poppy ult, and is just going to try and get some jungle camps here. Um, Heroic is not letting him have it. Unfortunately, does miss his skill shot, so isn't able to get a play done there. And Heroic is going for Honan. No mercy. And Will actually steals the kill. Eight stacks on his Dark Seal. Uh, it feels like very short amount of time ago that he was at zero, um, and they're able to pick up the other dragon instead, and they're up about 8,000 gold. Um, this game was just super hard to play for Metabusters after draft. Um, I'm not slandering the off meta, I am slandering um, the absolute lack of any early game champions uh, into uh, this composition. It's just super hard for you to play. Oh, and Heroic has a double knockup, pops the World Ender after getting that CC, and flashes onto Noam, but is getting stunned for so long and just gets shut down. It's a thousand gold on the Karthus. That's exactly what you want to see. Karthus fed in the late game is able to just chunk health bars before fights even begin. Will's going for something here, um, but the slow field forces out um, Will's flash. The bot lane of Metabusters is doing super well here, and the spell shield from Noam, very heads-up play. Um, Poppy just shouldn't have ulted there. Uh, if you don't ult on Poppy, the cooldown is very short um, for it to come back up. Uh, but does just burn it, maybe thinking he'd uh, outlast the Morgana spell shield, but isn't able to do it. Uh, so that cooldown is wasted a little bit. 
And now I believe the Valorant Pirates are going to be able to pick up this Rift Herald. Yep, and Jackson gets the Rift Herald. This is second Rift, I believe, uh, so not going to be able to get too much off of it. No plates available anymore. But Silico is looking a bit aggressive for this, but Noam is just on a ward, uh, so Valor's going to be able to get out. No threat to him. GP Alt comes down mid to kind of stop this push, and Higiri is trying to farm some first strike gold off the Aatrox. His deficit in terms of CS is not as bad as it was before. Um, Silico and Valor are both looking to get things done there. Silico is actually just able to pick up the kill um, before before uh, the card that sold hits. And Aatrox is dropping down super low on the top lane, but there's just not uh, anything that Tidiri has left. Um, he does get to survive, and that's more Dark Harvest stacks for Garrett, but um, that ult did not have as much value as uh, his previous ones did. Garrett is sitting on six Dark Harvest stacks here, um, and I believe is going for the death cap second item? We'll have to see though, I'm not sure what the Karthus builds are at the moment. No, I'm farming a lot better now that he's on a champion that can farm. Uh, <laughs> definitely looking uh, pretty good. Uh, Aya is looking incredible this game, has not died at all, um, and Twitch and a Heroic Will on the Twitch are completely running over this game. Uh, the Spell Shield was a little bit late for Morgana, but she able, she's able to hit the root, so it doesn't actually matter, able to just walk away from the play. Um, and if this game does go on for too, too long, um, the Metamusters are going to be back in it. Um, they will outscale. Um, but it's very important for the Valorant Pirates here to not take their foot off the gas and just try to end the game as fast as possible uh, before that can happen. Gangplank's going to be a threat. Karthus is going to be a threat. It looks like Valor's trying to do exactly that. Forces um, a play mid. Hadiri is likely just going to die top. Um, and once again, a key player ejected from the game. Um, Silico does get CC'd pretty hard there. Twitch is not able to pick up the kill onto Silico yet. He does eventually. The AP tick on the passive is insane. Um, Garrett survives with one tick left. Um, but now the Rift Herald's being dropped mid. There's no wave, but they should just be able to take the tower, um, off of that play. Looks like Hideri was actually able to survive that onslaught topside, and is now ulting to stop this wave from crashing to the tower. Um, they might just be able to pick it up anyway. Uh, the tower does end up going down. Valor still has Shogath ulti, and Twitch is just going to be able to escort them out there with the slow field. Uh, the root does hit the poppy, and Valor's just desperately trying to Shogath ulti someone. Don't believe anyone's going to die from this, but does get a Dark Harvest stack, which is what you want. Yeah, and Valor just goes for it, does not able to pick up uh, the kill with the ult, um, and trades his life for it. A bit of an ego play there. Um, or just greeting. Um, as you see that Cho'Gath ulti expire, uh, the drive to do something certainly does exist. And Hideri steps up just a bit too far, Heroic's going to be able to pick up a kill here. Um, no shot, he doesn't. Um, very well played. And Silico and Noam are looking for this dragon, uh, trying to keep that objective control alive. Will may be able to get something done, but it's really hard to outsmite. Uh, ults for the play, that was way closer than it should have been, but ultimately Noam is able to pick it up. Silico is in a really rough spot here. Um, and Jackson using the Empowered Blast Cone to get over there. Flashes! And the Empowered Blast Cone just takes him right over to Silico. He's isolated, and Noam is in a tough spot here. There's no way he gets out. Burns a flash, though, could happen. But now Twitch is here, and Will picks up his 10th kill of the game. This is why you do not give Will Twitch. You simply cannot do it. There's too many builds for it to take. It can be played in many roles. It's just too versatile. Not to mention the fact that he's absolutely crazy on it, so. Tough spot to be in, for sure. And there's a half of a Cho'Gath's health, and Will does not even take tower aggro there for some ungodly reason.
Oh, Silico stops the back, is just going to look for the kill. Heroic falls down quite low. Silico does have ulti. Um, the Icon for it's actually broken in game. Uh, Nom's getting him quite low. The Ignite does come down. Silico drops down low, has the W to get out, and Aatrox sustain with the Seraphine there is just too much, potentially. Um, he does have the Merc Treads, so the CC from the Morgana is reduced. It's a very good buy here. Quick Blades picked up uh, for the Gangplank. That's two items. Um, not too far behind the Aatrox anymore. Um, except Aatrox just completed Zerelda's, so never mind. I retract my previous statement. Uh, he's still full in, a full item behind. Um, Valor's just playing super far forward here, looking for a play. Uh, his bot lane is super fed, uh, so it's very easy for him to just walk up with them. But now it's a 3v5, so the fight is a little harder to call. Uh, Baron is up. Uh, MVP could look to just grab this. And it appears that's what they're going to do. I don't see any way for Metabusters to contest them. Um, except for maybe a steal, but the steal potential of the Morgana is a lot less than the steal potential of the Camille. Um, and Noam was not able to steal uh, with the Camille, so we'll see. Red buff is just getting picked up here by, I believe, Silico. That might be who you want to have it. The Rue comes down again, and Poppy ult hits two out. The spell shield not here this time, and Noam's just dead. And your ability to steal a Baron is uh, basically zero uh, when you are dead. Uh, I think maybe a Redemption is the only way it could possibly be done, um, or with some champions that have dots. Uh, Teemo is a very funny one. Shaco boxes are another way. Gin traps. Uh, Valor is going in. The Morgana ulti does expire, uh, or he just used it. Uh, can't tell which. Um, blast cones, uh, especially the empowered ones, are kind of funny. And Silica might just get burst here. Oh, Valor. Uh, completely whiffs. Um, and I will say, uh, I think Silico got the edge in the mid lane again this game. Um, but I don't think his team has a huge chance of winning here. Um, Valor is just getting CC'd like crazy, taking a lot of damage. He has no way to get in here. Um, and now the card still comes down that should be a Dark Harvest stack, except now... Um, Zoni's Hourglass is being invested to a huge counter to Karthus. Um, Stopwatch is burnt for now, but pretty sure Silas can just buy the full item on back. And there we go. Um, so now he's going to have it immediately back up uh, for the next Karthus ulti. Luckily uh, for Garrett, it's the only one we see on this team. So he might still have threat on to the other players. Uh, we have to see how it goes, though. Um, quick stack check on Honan. Only has two at 25 minutes. Not what you want to see. Uh, can always eat minions or jungle monsters, uh, but has just not been able to do it so far. Uh, the long range of the enemy composition um, in the bot lane is pretty tough. Uh, everywhere else, they are kind of short range, but uh, so are the metabusters. Uh, so it's not necessarily a range discrepancy. I still think uh, MVP has the range advantage overall in the game. They're up about 10k gold. Um, as this next dragon fight comes up. Uh, Jackson does just get rooted, eats a lot of damage. Um, it's looking to just take someone out of the fight. Uh, burns Silico's Edge of Night, um, is not able to eject him from the fight. That time, actually, the Morgana Spell Shield did run out before the alt hit, so he could have targeted him. Um, but yeah, it looks like this should just be a free dragon uh, for the Valorant Pirates. Uh, would put the teams at two apiece. And Heroic is just going for this tower. Uh, Honan is not really going to be able to defend it. Um, just burns the flash immediately. Got slowed by the Storelda, so it's really hard to avoid the Aatrox. Deary's just chunking out this wave, but um, so many people here trying to burn him down. Um, looks like they're just going to give up on killing Hideri and instead focus on the tower, uh, waiting until their wave shows up. Aatrox is not able to get any kills on the top side of the map, but is still pressuring this tower. Um, Silico is trading back a lot of damage, but it's going to be really hard to play into this Baron wave, um, especially with Aatrox throwing abilities out of the bush. The bot tower does end up falling. Jackson is going in, looking for a play, but Heroic's able to pick up the tower. Silico is caught in a lot of CC here, um, and the charm does hit the Karthus down on the bot side of the map, and Heroic is looking to get something done. Um, two kills, and I believe this is both teams' Karthus ultis, one picked up by the Silas. Um, this is a three for one so far. Aatrox was able to double kill on the top side, 
and we have two more kills coming down on the bot side. But Jackson was getting uh, was able to get picked off there, and Valor picks up the fifth kill of the fight for a ace um, for Mass Valor and Pirates, and they should be able to just end the game here. Uh, Twitch with a death cap, 18 stack Magi's, and Nashers should just chunk towers, um, and Valor is going to do a great job of that as well. Um, TP coming down from Aya, a little bit BM, um, but there is a combat use for it. You're able to keep the minion alive that's being aggroed by the tower. I'm not sure if it was the right minion or not, but that's kind of besides the point. Um, Will is going to fall down before this game ends. A thousand gold going over to Silico. Um, Valor does have Silico's ulti. <laughs> Might just look for a kill on his friend there. Um, but this game should just be able to be ended. Um, it's a bit awkward though. Noam is going to fall to the Aatrox. Okay, and Valor just goes into Fountain. Deary is falling down quite low again. Silco is struggling to get stuff done. Is able to pick up another kill, but Poppy misses the ulti. Silico is just going to fall to the Poppy. Passive auto. And Deary's getting a lot of damage done. It just really wants to kill Heroic. Is able to do it. 1,000 gold over the GP, but this game is just over. Maybe? Uh, Jackson's hitting champions instead of the Nexus. Uh, so that might be a way for this game to continue going on. The red waves are up. Might be able to keep him alive. And Jackson is just not hitting the Nexus. What is he doing? And he just dies. But now the minion waves are too big. Um, and that is going to be the end of the game. What a what a series. Um, Heroic uh, played insane there. I think there are three really strong uh, MVP candidates um, in this game. It's a very tough call here. Um, not going to lie, though. I think I'm going to have to give it to, to Aya. She basically had a 1v2 bot lane the entire game uh, into a bot lane that uh, was winning into them in the early game uh, in the last game. And in those... Uh, team fights and skirmishes uh literally every e and ultimate was able to hit um exactly as she needed it to has the most kp on her team um and just played super well uh picked up the staff of flowing water to help out the silas and twitch uh too which is really cool to see um but yeah great series by uh the mass valorant pirates uh going 2-1 into next week and unfortunately the meta busters were not able to pick up uh, their first win here, uh, so they are going to be 0-3 going into the next week of games. But yes, GG's to everyone who played, um, and we will see you next week.